back here on One on One. Brian Raybacks, Will Talent, and now Evan Harkin joining us. We're about to talk Yankees. Evan, thank you for coming on, and obviously a big week to talk about the Yankees. Excited to have you. Of course, yeah. Excited to talk Yankees. I think this is the perfect time to talk about Yankees as a Yankee fan. You know, finally some hope in this month of June that has kind of been hopeless for Yankee fans without Aaron Judge and Yankees not performing too well. But Wednesday was a completely different story. Yeah, so let's talk about Wednesday. First off, the one thing, the first thing I want to ask you guys. So we're obviously talking about Domingo Herman's perfect game, 24th perfect game in MLB history, did it against the Oakland A's, 27 up, 27 down. First perfect game since Felix Hernandez in 2012. So it's obviously no secret how rare a perfect game is. Uh, first thing I want to ask you guys is, Kind of where were you throughout the night, and then how did you end up watching this unfold? Oh, yeah. Well, let's keep it straight. I was asleep. Oh, straight up. Did you, miss, did you miss it? Missed the whole thing. Oh, no, man. not the whole thing. I saw the first four innings. Uh, Tuesday was just so frustrating, <laughs> uh, and I had to get up really early on Thursday. So I watched the first four innings. Stanton hit that home run. Uh, Domingo looked good. So I said to myself, I was like, all right, Stanton just hit a home run. They have a lead, and... If Domingo can give us, you know, two more solid innings, we'll be all right. And I wake up to like 93 text messages and a bunch of notifications. <laughs> and it's just like Domingo Herman throws a perfect game. And I was like, wow, I slept through that one. But that's how perfect games are. If I didn't sleep through that one, wouldn't that happen? Because the stars got to be aligned. I had to go to bed. So wherever you guys were at, it had to happen. Otherwise, that it just wouldn't. It wouldn't have. Evan, don't tell me you were asleep, too. Were you watching it? Exact opposite for me. There we go. Awake, wasn't going to watch the Yankees-A's game with uh, Domingo Herman <laughs> pitching. Wasn't set on watching that. And then got the text in the fourth inning to turn on the game. So I was up with my dad. We turned on the game. And glad I did, definitely. Yeah, so I was kind of watching the game as I usually do. You know, it started at 930 against the Yankees and the A's. So you kind of have it on in the background mostly, but with... This one, you saw. I saw Domingo was pitching well into about the fourth and the fifth innings. I was like, okay, this is good. And the offense was firing on all cylinders. You mentioned the Stanton home run, and then they had that big inning. So it was looking good. And then I kept seeing after the sixth inning that it was still a no-hitter. I kept seeing the zero in the hit column for the A's, and I was like, ooh, that's kind of interesting. But then I didn't realize until the seventh it was a perfect game. And that's when I really started to lock in, and I was with a lot of my friends, and they were like, why are you locked into an A's-Yankees game? The Yankees are up 9 nothing. Like, what's going on? And I don't I don't like jinxing the perfect game, so I'm like, hey, Domingo's pitching really well. You should probably, like, look at your phones. And obviously he ended up completing the perfect game. And it's kind of just crazy that we get to witness that. And I don't think we realize how rare a perfect game is. 27 up, 27 down, no base runners. I mean, it hasn't happened in, like, 10-plus years, and that's what kind of shocked me. So... We witnessed a rare moment in baseball history the other night, and I think it's a privilege to be able to come on here and talk about it because we don't always get opportunities like this. Perfect games are awesome. It, like you said, Brian, it hasn't uh, – 11 years, 2012, I think, was the last one, right? Felix, Felix Hernandez. And in that year, there were three. That was that was unbelievable. I think it was Matt, Matt Cain, Cain, Philip else? Humber. No, I don't know if you remember that one. That's what makes perfect games so perfect. Yeah. Philip Humber. Drop third strike, Brendan Ryan. I know, that, I, I know that him, name, man. yeah. Brendan Ryan struck out and argued the drop third strike, <laughs> and A.J. Pruszynski threw it to first. 3-2 count, I think it was. Drop third strike. If Brendan Ryan doesn't argue, it's probably a no-hitter. Perfect game for Philip Humber, and then the king, Felix Hernandez. We haven't seen one since, we'll, and that's because pitching has just completely changed since Felix Hernandez's perfect game, and that really wasn't that long ago. How pitchers are labeled as pitchers, it's just completely different now. So this, honestly, it's been so long. I think the next one may be even in an even longer span of time, just because from what I was saying, pitchers just aren't what they used to be. Guys don't go nine innings like that right. ever. You're, you'll be you'll get your five, you'll get your decision, maybe six, and then it's back. Then it's onto the bullpen. So it, it was truly remarkable to actually see it. We got robbed the two, um, Galarraga. Oh yeah, 2010, oh. and uh, I, I'll throw Max Scherzer in there. Jose Tabata leaned into yep. that one. Mm-hmm. That still was a no hitter, but still, perfect games. There's a reason they're called perfect. It was just. It was an incredible night. You literally can't pitch any better. And I think it's, 
I mean, obviously you're not expecting a perfect game when you're watching, but Domingo Herman, it's so surprising because his last two outings, I mean, he was getting rocked. Terrible, terrible Fif- 15 earned runs in his last two starts, and then, of course, the way baseball works, it's a funny sport. He just comes out his next outing and throws a perfect game. So, And Aaron Boone was talking after the game how when Domingo's going, he's really good. And I've been able to see a couple of his starts where he was really good. I was at his game against the Guardians where he went into the ninth inning and he got pulled and that was a whole thing. But he was on that night. And he was rolling for a while before those two outings and obviously the perfect game. I mean, it kind of shows how good he can be when he is on with his pitches, especially his curveball. Oh, yeah. 21 out of 27 outs with the curveball alone, which is insane. Domingo Herman, not a guy known for having that put-away pitch, but the curveball was definitely that pitch on Wednesday night. Not only locating just the curveball, but all of his pitches, uh, inside, outside corner, leaving nothing over the middle of the plate, which is something Domingo's been known to do, is leave things over the plate that have been taken long. And uh, besides the pitching, the defense was exceptional. I mean, Anthony Rizzo with two plays that could have easily been hits, would have been scored as hits. Uh, Some great scoops at first. Donaldson with a good ending play. Really good defense by the Yankees to back up Domingo. I think it helped him in the game stay poised. And I think his confidence in that game was something I've never seen from Domingo. Looking at him on the mound, it almost looked like looking at Garrett Cole when he has that I know I'm going to get you out atmosphere to him. You know, chest puffed up, locked in on the batter. And uh, I think I hope this can really be a turning point for Domingo, and maybe he can take some key takeaways from that game and move it on to and his next few starts. Boone was saying that his fastball and other pitches were great, and then it made his curveball that much better, and the A's just had no match for it. And just really fun watching a perfect game and just being able to watch a moment in baseball history. And could it serve as a turning, turning point for the Yankees team? I mean, we know they haven't played – great in the month of June, but two big wins, some big moments, and maybe the Yankees are finding it here, maybe without Aaron Judge. That's what a lot of people want to think and what they're going to say right now. They definitely, you know, it, it looked like, it looks that way. 11 runs in that perfect game, and then 10 the next day. Didn't play yesterday, doubleheader today. You, you hope that's the case, because if that's the case, they will be getting going at a great time, because th- if this is the turning point, this is what's going to make or break their season. Are This is going to determine if they're going to be buyers or sellers at the deadline. If they can have a good first few weeks of July carried by this perfect game and that series in Oakland, forget that first loss, it's over. That That is going to be a true testament to how this Yankees team ends up you know, performing for the rest of the season. So... I mean, it was just truly special, really was. You're talking about the pitch mixes. He threw three different pitches the whole game. His curveball is his primary pitch to begin with, threw that a whole lot. One thing that we haven't mentioned that I can't stress enough because you just don't see it that much, Shohei Otani is very good at this. Domingo Herman threw 99 pitches, 72 strikes. Crazy. You don't really see that. I mean, that is just efficiency. Not only did the A's make weak contact, I think there was probably two hard hit balls that whole game. Asturi Ruiz had a line drive to, I think Ikef was playing center, or was it Bader? It was Bader. Bader, Bader was playing center that day? Okay, so absolute screamer to Bader in the first inning, out. And then you have what you always have in every perfect game. I can name you a few that play was the Anthony Rizzo diving stop at first. You know, Gregor Blanco from Matt Cain's perfect game. Um, what was his name? Dwayne Wise robbing the home run the, for the for Burley Mark one? Burley. Yeah. yeah, every perfect game has its play. Anthony Rizzo made that play. So that's what makes perfect games perfect. Everything's got to go right. You got to be at the right place at the right time. The A's were not making hard contact. That line out and that ground ball the first for Rizzo, that was it. Everything else was either a strikeout or it was beat into the ground or it was hit straight up in the air. So I uh, you can't really get more efficient than 27 up, 27 down. 